set aside that inflated ego of yours and pay attention. Your ego is not going to get you anywhere. I want you to truly focus and grasp the significance of these words rather than, you know, mindlessly listening. I am certain that you can't resist the urge to scroll through comments or switch tabs because you are afraid of putting in work. Let's be honest, you clicked on this video because you have nothing better to do. So, now you're at a crossroads. You either listen with intent or you leave. Chapter 1 Video Game Addiction you might be taken aback, but hear me out. Engaging in too many video games is detrimental to your brain. It is so easy to take something that is pure and enjoyable and corrupt it into something that only hurts you. The more that you play, the more it deteriorates your brain's abilities. Quitting social media or other habits won't really make a difference if you're still trapped in the world of video games, if you're still escaping reality every single day of your life for hours at a time. Now, video games may seem fun and captivating, and they are. They aren't bad things to play. I'm not saying don't you touch another video game in your life. They're amazing. They're actually pretty stimulating for your brain when they're done in the right amount. They can so easily distort your perception of what a real man should be doing. True manhood entails adventure, conquering challenges, displaying leadership qualities, and above all, not being a loser. Leveling up in that virtual world while neglecting your personal growth is detrimental to your brain's dopamine receptors, and it hampers your ability to find joy in real-life experiences. And I think we all know that on some level deep down when you're on the sixth hour of that game binge, because trust me, I've been there. What do you feel? Do you feel happy? No, I feel numb. I feel vaguely vaguely content with my existence when I'm on that sixth hour. So you have to understand that most people want you to waste your time this way. But if you genuinely desire success, you have to break free from this trap. Life won't be boring when you let your loser friends or your important video games go. Instead, it'll perk up when you explore new hobbies, new activities. You find that piece of your soul you lost so long ago. So don't just sit idly ignoring opportunities. Write down 10 things that you want to achieve and eliminate 5 unnecessary and trivial pursuits. High status men don't make excuses or hesitate to take action, and do you know why? Well, because they yearn for success, they strive for physical fitness, they have a burning desire to achieve. You lack that drive, which is why you constantly postpone things. So break free from the need for somebody to hold your hand and just do it. Chapter 2. Self-Improvement Videos You might be thinking, well, what's the point of watching this video then? Watching self-improvement videos can give you a false sense of productivity. Yeah, yeah, I know, it's weird, it's... Does this count? But trust me, it's, it's meaningless if you don't put any of that knowledge into practice. That's, that's the key. Imagine extensively preparing for a chess tournament, but failing to apply any of the strategies and techniques that you learn during the actual event. To offer advice to others, you have to do something. You have to first take action. I can assure you that most people on Discord servers, Reddit, or any social media platform who dole out self-improvement advice are themselves struggling and achieving very little. It's time to be bold and discover things on your own, whether through reading books or by taking decisive action or just thinking real hard and real honest to yourself. Chapter 3. Alpha Mentality Fallacy Believe me, thinking you've done it all and considering yourself better than everyone else won't get you far. There is far too much to do and learn in this lifetime for you to ever be done learning. There's not enough time in your life, so drop that ego. Refusing to listen to others and displaying an entitled attitude won't earn you any respect. There will always be somebody more skilled, more knowledgeable, and in a different domain than you. For instance, you might excel in martial arts, but pitted against a professional debater, you would be exposed. You are not a one-in-a-million guy, and those who believe that they are are often losers. The most common thing that you could do is really want to be special. Having a bloated ego will not take you places. It makes you look arrogant. Instead, ask questions, show interest in others' passions, and listen attentively. Nobody appreciates a person who always has to interject their little opinion without considering alternative viewpoints. The more you insist on being right during a disagreement, the less likely the other person is actually going to want to listen to what you have to say. 
So let go of the trivial matters and, more importantly than anything else, be open to the fact that you will be wrong in life. And often, weak people are those who can't handle a joke or think that they're too tough for others. Chapter 4. Getting into Arguments A man who can't control his emotion is no man. He is a mere boy. Learn to remain calm and not get worked up over trivial things. I have witnessed people engaging in pointless fights over so many little things and disrespectful comments. Is that worth it? Move on. Don't let things affect you. Be a big boy. Before succumbing to anger like a child, take a deep breath and contemplate the consequences of allowing that person to rile you up. Even if you win the argument, you're going to end up hurting your friend or family member's emotions. Is, is proving your point really worth it? Instead, strive to understand their perspective and express your own calmly to foster a meaningful debate. Because if you're only focused on what you're arguing about and not trying to understand their perspective that you aren't debating, you're lecturing. Engaging in fights or arguments is pretty futile. It's, it's best to avoid them at all costs. Even if you firmly believe that you're right, learn how to de-escalate situations or just walk away. Now, I don't mean don't disagree with people. Obviously, you have to stand up for what you believe in. But if a conversation escalates into a full-blown argument, walk away. You don't deal with people when they aren't calm. Tell that to them. Chapter 5. Adult Movies If you've studied neuroscience or listened to Andrew Huberman, you've understood the detrimental effects of adult movies, or let's just say it, porn. It eventually dismin diminishes testosterone levels due to repeated dopamine releases and seeks. While seeking dopamine initially increases testosterone, overindulgence leads to a decrease, particularly in the developing brains of adolescents. Adult movies drastically affect dopamine and testosterone production, resulting in decreased activity and attentiveness. Adult movies, with its global accessibility, is like a virus that infects you. Once the addiction takes hold, your brain becomes wired to seek dopamine for satisfaction. Well, it always seeks dopamine for satisfaction, but I think you get what I mean. This applies not only to adult movies, but to any other addiction in your life. Food, social media, excessive masturbation, a a anything. Train your brain to break free from that cycle of dopamine seeking. The more you resist, the less likely your brain is going to crave it. Don't expect to effortlessly go without adult movies for a week or a month if you've been indulging every day for years. Understand that it is a lifelong process, not a temporary challenge, not a temporary fix to your lifestyle. Take it seriously and commit to personal growth, transcending mere abstinence. Make it a part of who you are. Obviously not saying to never not ever, but you know what I mean, moderation. Chapter 6 Bad Friends it may appear that your friends are genuine, they're supportive, they lift you up when you hit the gym or achieve physical success. However, let's be honest, most of them aren't true friends. They're more like acquaintances or even toxic influences or the way that I've come to understand. There is a difference between a friend and a good time buddy. And it's also crucial to recognize that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. If you surround yourself with individuals who engage in unproductive habits like excessive gaming, mindless indulgence, and an unhealthy lifestyle, you have any idea how much more likely it is that you will be influenced to do that same stuff? In, in such circumstances, you're not going to grow. You're not going to achieve your full potential. Think about this. Do you think a Navy SEAL general spends their time gaming away on Discord and playing League of Legends? No, they prioritize working out, engaging activities like martial arts, and surrounding themselves with friends who are successful and driven. And maybe they play for a couple hours on the weekends. If you truly desire success, you can't afford to associate yourself with individuals who are content with mediocrity. It's time to break away from these losers and seek out positive influences. Chapter 7. Conquering Procrastination Procrastination is a detrimental habit that can hinder your progress, your success. Instead of simply trying to find ways to procrastinate less, it's crucial to delve deeper. Identify the root causes of your procrastination. Whether it's movies, Netflix, social clubs, or other distractions, it's time to face the reality that sometimes you just need to buckle down and do the work. Eliminate all distractions and create a focused environment where you can concentrate. 
It's natural if you're tempted by your phone or the alluring uh, scroll through TikTok. But remind yourself that such distractions will not get you anywhere. You are not going to further yourself as a human being. You are just going to be uh, a sack of cells uh, indulging itself. Take a moment to prioritize your task. Visualize the end result and then take decisive action. Avoid making excuses or certainly wasting time. If Netflix is a persistent distraction, ask yourself why does it have such a hold on you? Is watching a movie really more important than making progress towards your goals? Or even not just making progress towards your goals, thinking about what it means to be a human? Having a little bit of time to self-reflect and think about the grander mysteries of life, is a movie truly more important than that? Instead of seeking fleeting moments of pleasure and dopamine, choose to invest your time and your energy in meaningful work. And if you don't have any meaningful work, find what is meaningful to you and then start the work. A lot of times people will occupy themselves with work or other things to keep them busy. But a lot of times we forget that we need to understand why we work. So that's what I'm saying. Choose, choose some time away from Netflix or whatever service you use and choose a little more time in your own head, in your own silence. Although it's not going to provide any instant gratification, trust me, you're going to thank yourself in the long run. Life is a lot of silence, and I know a lot of people who aren't comfortable with silence who will whip out their phone at the first sense of boredom. Think. Recognize your triggers and eliminate them, as there's no point in allowing annoying distractions to hinder that focus. For peak productivity and motivation, consider tackling tasks in the morning when your testosterone levels are at their peak. By delaying your breakfast until around 9 a.m., you can tap into the benefits of the hunger hormone, which enhances cognitive function. This way, you can truly gather your resources and set yourself up for success. Please note that I'm not advocating that you starve yourself. Instead, if necessary, opt for a light breakfast like water and a banana. Chapter 8. Bad Dieting This part is specifically addressed to younger people. If you're between the ages of 11 and 17, please don't put yourself on a highly restrictive diet. You'll stunt your growth and you'll regret it when you become the short person who's subject to mockery in a workplace. That being said, I, um, all I did intermittent fasting and keto when I was 14, and I am six foot seven, I shit you not. So, you know, bodies are all different, but, but I also did a lot of research when I did what I did. I did so much research, and I did it slowly so I could see if it made my body feel weird. Point being, be really careful if you're a young one. It's real easy to mess up and do the wrong diet, and you will end up stunting your growth if you don't do enough research. Your body needs proper nutrition during these formative years, so don't obsess over achieving a chiseled six-pack. Remember, height and overall health is so much more important in the long run. However, if you're obese or have a body fat percentage above 25%, then knock yourself out trying a healthier eating approach. Matter of fact, I'd encourage it. A lot of people seem to think that Losing weight is an even mix of working out and dieting. I, from first-hand experience, can tell you it's 80-20. Honestly, you can lose all the weight that you would by going to the gym by just knocking your calories down. A lot. Knocking your calories down a lot, by the way. You gotta know the numbers. So, if you're wondering what the ideal body fat percentage is to maintain, you should aim for around 15-22% to of your nude. Uh, they're, they're different for men and women, obviously. So whenever you feel hungry, opt for nourishing options like almonds or fruits to satisfy your cravings. Again, I found a lot of success with low carbs, high uh, medium fats, and high protein. Found a lot of success that way, so uh, do your research and start your journey. Your body will thank you, especially since, you know, almonds promote testosterone production and overall well-being, and they're, that's just obviously one example. There are a lot of things that eating the right foods does for your body. And that's about all the stuff I have to say, so I'll see you later.